A year ago, he was boxing's version of the Terminator. Kodo continues the vicious assault. A seemingly unstoppable fighting machine. He can fight anybody on the planet. But within the past year, Miguel Cotto has suddenly looked more human than ever before. Last July, Cotto prepared for his showdown fight with Antonio Margarito, looking to defend his perfect record and welterweight dominance. And once the bell sounded against Margarito, Cotto looked as focused as ever. Miguel Cotto looks very sharp, very quick in yeah. the early going. Cotto is winning the fight, but he's, he's going to have to be prepared to go 12 rounds, and that's going to be very, very difficult. I get tired, you know? My legs get tired, my arms get tired, and he take advantage of that. Since the round six, seven, you can see the, the, all the swelling coming out of my face. And Cotto goes to a knee. An epic fight with an epic conclusion. The first loss of Cotto's career. It took me like two weeks to take out all the swelling from my face. Six months later, the boxing world was shocked when Margarito was caught trying to use illegal hand wraps in his fight against Shane Mosley. Immediately, speculation grew. Had Margarito used those same plaster-like wraps against Cotto? The pieces do fit pretty neatly where all of a sudden Margarito's punches started carving up Cotto. Cotto started cowering a little bit. And you think, wow, well, that's about when he um, got all sweated up and the, and the plaster turned to brick, and there you go. Every boxer knows uh, what your trainer, or what they put on your fist. And I think he, he used it before, but the only person who can tell you that is him or, or his team. The week after Margarito's one-year suspension, Cotto stepped back into the ring for a comeback fight. The only visible change in the fighter was an assortment of new tattoos. Maybe throwing some tats on gives him a sense of, of pride and power and kind of gets that mojo. I don't know if really something like that actually works, but if in his head it works, then, you know, all power to him. What wasn't working for Cotto, however, was training in Puerto Rico two months ago before the Claudi training camp began. Miguel and his father approached his uncle Evangelista about moving camp. Él tiene muchas distracciones en Puerto Rico. Eh, hacía ya un tiempo atrás que estaban por por sacarlo de Puerto Rico a entrenar. Mi hermano no no permitía que él viniera a a entrenar fuera a, como lo ha hecho afuera fuera de Puerto Rico. We talked to him to tell him we prefer to move in to here for the benefit of my career. And if he can be responsible with me, I can work. I can work with him anymore. Their tense relationship, which through the years had deteriorated, finally exploded, and the long simmering animosity boiled over, with the pair reportedly putting their hands on each other, and Evangelista tossing a cement block through the window of his nephew's car. We can't avoid those situations, you know. But with good attitude, I have a better performance training and that, that was happened with us in Tampa. His camp in Tampa is now headed by Joe Santiago, a former assistant to Evangelista, now given the responsibility of training one of the world's top boxers. Significa muchísimo, eh, nada nos puede distraer. Sabemos que tenemos una gran pelea y un gran rete y queremos salir eh, victoriosos. But the question lingers, was the breakup with his uncle just nine weeks ago the right move? Lamentablemente tengo que decir que sí. Entiendo que ya la atmósfera estaba muy cargada. Y antes que todo seguirá siendo mi hermano. Eh, él y yo tenemos que separar los problemas porque hermanos son y seguiremos siendo hermanos. If you have a, a really happy team, a pretty good uh, uh, communication between the all the members of your team, you have a, a better uh, attitude to work.